with the fires of madness burning bright deep within. She has always been the most wonderful cryptid you have ever laid eyes on, but now, in the moonlight... Now listen here, duct tape. We got a job to do and we are going to do it. So, tighten up the tape on your heads and we are going in. Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends. And welcome to this a brand new day. I had the fan on in my window on, well, yeah, <laughs> on all night. I had the fan in the hallway going all night. So there was a breeze through this room all night. Right now, the fan in the window is on. So I'm going to be using noise reduction to take that sound out. And hokey smokes. It's supposed to be a scorcher today into the 90s, so thumbs up for that. At least I slept a little, uh, mostly. I got to bed late and I woke up at 4, but between those times I slept. So that part's good at the very least. Definitely a thumbs up on that. And of course, front loading of videos. Hey, if you could toss me a like, if you like what you hear and see, that'd be awesome. If you could subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and you like what you hear and see, that would be very, very cool. If you could leave me a comment, that would be double plus good. Definitely a good thing. And of course, I would like to thank each and every one of my Patreon patrons. These literally beautiful and literally awesome people who are indeed literally beautiful and literally awesome. Without these people's help, I and my pets would be, well, hosed like Christmas monkeys. And trust me, that is no way to be hosed. If you would like to help me and my pets out and, and keep us alive, you know, there are links to my Patreon down in the video description. There are links to my PayPal as well if you don't want to become a patron and if you'd like to help me without sending money, there's an Amazon wishlist link as well. Definitely a thumbs up. And hey, <laughs> uh, front loading a video is over. Yay! So the continued drama in our lives is my housemates have been looking for things and anything that was even halfway available as a place to move into has already been snapped up and any place that hasn't been is like almost four thousand dollars a month so it looks like we're gonna be here for another year i don't mind change is bad so i mean change is good you need change if you don't change you're stagnant stagnation is death you have to change you have to move you have to alter things so but that's going on there. I have therapy today and my head has just been a mess. So there's a lot of stuff I need to talk about. Thumbs up on that. Ugh. Past that, I just survived yesterday. I played some Grim Dawn. I made some phone calls. I got some things done. That's good. And then later on, I went for walkies and came back and just relaxed. I think the antidepressant part, as well as the energy and ADHD part of the Wellbutrin is really starting to work. I have mentioned before that a common thing with people who have ADHD is they live in a landfill. You can keep your common areas just spotless, but the place that you relax in is a landfill. Well, I've gone from my whole life the landfill to tidy, to landfill to tidy, and I've been doing that here. It gets to be a landfill. I make it so it's perfect, well not perfect, but cleaner, and then it slowly becomes a landfill again. Well, because of various reasons where it's possible we're going to have a management walkthrough this weekend, I don't know. I decided that it was time to really do another deep clean, and so I vacuumed, I've been tidying, I moved the stuff on my shelves back there. This morning, I usually let my little, I have a trash can down here, I usually wait until it's overflowing before I empty it. And I had yesterday's soda bottles that I drank on the floor behind because I crushed them and then I set them on the floor because I'm a lazy old man. <laughs> this morning, I went and tidied everything up. I took my Wilbutrin late around six and about seven-ish, I was, energized and doing stuff so but here's hoping that that's really starting to kick in definitely a thumbs up on that <clears throat> past that i've just been thinking obsessively about my various settings 
I mean, it's still just the one setting with the whole inside outside razor's edge and then the cryptid part of it, which is still, <coughs> excuse me, a part of the setting and the world. I have been thinking about the character of Polly, who is a flower type cryptid, and her boyfriend, whom is a bad boy type. And I've also been thinking about what it would be like as I've mentioned that as a homeless person, you are very at risk for being eaten because the cryptids are going to eat those who will not be missed first. And especially in American society, the homeless are the unwanted. And if you vanish as a homeless person, people aren't wondering, gosh, what's wrong? They're just, oh good, no more homeless people around. They don't care that they're just being eaten. So life sucks on top of everything else. Because really, think about it. And then it came to a story idea and it got mixed into something else. I'd like to write this one up. It involves the three people, a homeless person, Polly and Jimmy. But it, it came to me while I was walking and I was working on it, following the creativity. But it's got, if you heard it as an audio book, there are inserts where the guy, the, the narrator of the story's got kind of a southern slow drawl and he's, now, I just wanted to warn you that there are some POV changes coming up. They're not bad, but I wanted to let you know so you could hook your seatbelts up. Don't want anyone getting a whiplash. And then it goes on where he's just talking about the rest of the story. Whereas imagine if you are a person in, let's say, the United States where you haven't had any real education, but you've got a job and it's working, but it's menial labor, largely, and suddenly you've got health issues pop up that you didn't know about to the point that it's a medical emergency. You're in the hospital. And once that is done, well, insurance didn't pay for everything. So you've got to pay a lot and you've got to, you run through your life savings and you don't have a job anymore because now that you're out, you can't do that kind of work anymore. And you didn't have an education, so they fire you. And you still can't afford an education. You can't afford the time to pay for it because you're in medical emergency, need to pay for stuff time now. You even lose the house that your parents had raised you in. It was all paid for. You were just doing the taxes, but now you can't even afford to pay the taxes. So you have to pay, you have to sell the house to pay for your medical bills. So now you're living in a cheap place and you got a cheaper job that doesn't even have insurance. And with all of your medical bills and things going up, up, up in cost, of course, you eventually end up losing your apartment because your wages aren't going up while the cost of living are, but now you're just living in your car and you're still going to your job because you can do that, but really you're, you're hoping and praying. You're trying to keep your car working as best you can, but you don't have any money if it really breaks down. And of course, one day your car breaks down. And when you call up your job to let them know that you'll, you won't be able to make it in today and you're going to have to find public transport, they just fire you over the phone right there. And then of course, because your car is not working, it gets impounded as abandoned and you couldn't even afford to fix it. How can you afford to get it out of being impounded and then repair it so it doesn't get impounded again? Well, you can't. So your car gets sold. Now you got nothing. Everything you own is in a backpack and you're in the woods. You're just praying and hoping that life slows down just a little bit, gives you a chance to dig your heels in, get a hold with your hands, just stop the downward slide, give you a little bit of a chance to catch your breath. If you can do that, you can maybe dig your way out of this. But of course, since you've been living in the forest, 
Well, after about a week while you're walking through the park at night trying to get back to where your camp is, that's when you hear a motorcycle. And then the motorcycle pulls up and there's this guy that looks like James Dean from the 50s wearing jeans, white t-shirt, and, and a leather jacket. And the gal on the back of the motorcycle, she's all dressed up in goth and black boots and black lipstick, but they, they, they're not actually human. You can tell by looking at them, they're not people. And so you're starting to back up to get away, but the guy is fast. Oh my God, he's fast. Before you can even move too far, he's got iron grips on your shoulders. And on the motorcycle, the gal is just going, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And as you're staring at this guy looking at you, he opens up his mouth wider than it should ever be able to open several rows of teeth and he bites and rips a huge just swath of meat out of the side of your neck and your shoulder and oh my god you've hurt before but if you burned yourself you've been able to pull away if you've cut yourself you've been able to run it under cold water you can't get away from this and then as you're just screaming the grip goes from shoulder to wrist and pulls, twists, and then your arm is off. And you thought this hurt. No, God, your arm being torn off and arterial blood spraying out is bad. And he just tosses the arm to the gal on the motorcycle and says, here you go, babe. And as you're screaming, she starts eating the arm from the ragged spark down to the spark part down to the elbow and then he comes back bites again tears well now you're spraying out your carotid artery and you've got this artery and as you fade out into nothingness you just watch the gal eating your arm well and then of course what we have here is another pov chain and also, I didn't warn you, but you're going to become an omniscient narrator before you settle down behind someone's eyes again. And yeah, it's, a, it's of the two cryptids leaning back against a tree, and then it settles down behind his eyes, where he's sitting in the bloody mud around the tree and he's got a bloated belly because of course he's got 140 pounds of human meat inside of him. The grass is torn and blood stained. The ground is muddy and mud from blood and dirt. He's coated in gore and it's just been a beautiful and perfect night. And in the, the moonlight and the bright lights of the park, you look toward what the humans would call your girl, Polly the flower cryptid. And she too is coated in gore, with her hair in disarray, sticky with drying blood, her face coated in blood and other human fluids, her clothing sticky, drying with all these various fluids and liquids upon her. And in the moonlight, with her wide eyes, with the bright white sclera all around her iris, and her lips pulled back in thin lines far past her gum lines, exposing her small but dainty herbivore teeth stained with blood with chunks of meat still between them pulled back in a rictus of pain madness pleasure impossible to tell and in her eyes the pupils why the iris is gone fully dilated with the fires of madness burning bright deep within she has always been the most wonderful cryptid you have ever laid eyes on, but now, in the moonlight, she has never been more beautiful. 
It takes the time to try and find a proper positioning, because after all, he still has 140 pounds of meat that's just starting to digest in his, his digestive tract. But eventually, they do find a position that is mutually beneficial for both of them. And after a few minutes of work, mostly on her part, they finally scream their mutual ecstasies to the dark and starless night sky. And that's the whole thing. Because the whole point of that is, yeah, life kicks you when you down, when you are down, and you keep getting kicked down until you're so far down that life just says, ah, screw it, and then you get killed and eaten. And then the two of them are in love and just have a night of it, a perfect and beautiful night in the park. Thumbs up. So I've been thinking about that, and of course, I also wanted to mention, and thank you, of course, if you've watched this far, greatly appreciated. No one has forced you. I'm just a weird older man. Thank you very much for watching. I did watch a video where there's a YouTuber called Blunty. He was talking about when he was younger, lies he used to tell being an autistic child. And I just sat up immediately when he started talking about, it. as a kid, he would have people ask him, what's your favorite? And I'm going through this right now, have largely my adult life, where he said, I don't have a favorite. I don't have a favorite this, that. It depends. It depends on my mood. It depends on this. Sometimes I want this. Sometimes I want that. And it's like, yeah, I sat bolt upright. That's me. When somebody asks, what's your favorite genre of music? It's like, I don't have a favorite. It depends on how I'm feeling and what the day is. What I loved yesterday, I may tolerate today and hate tomorrow. It, I don't have a favorite. Even games that I love and play today, I may in a week feel nothing but contempt for and never want to play again. And then two weeks later, I'm booting up to play. I don't have favorites, but like he learned just to mask and give an answer and it worked, but masking is not fun. I haven't figured out masking yet <laughs> fully. Some things I do mask quite well. I mean, I'm almost 60 and I've survived this long, so hey. And there are other things I want to talk about, but of course I spend so much time on that one sort of story thing. Thumbs up for that. And of course I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab. I'm going to go through and thank how many people have left me comments in the past 24 hours. If I mispronounce the username, no disrespect is intended. And even though I count American Sign Language, well, well, well. So, call up my Chrome. We have Trevor. Thumbs up and thank you. We have Dakota Gunder, greatly appreciated. Jesse Koskin, always good to see you in the comments. And Hokey Smokes, hopefully it cools down. We're in the middle of a heat spike here. Oy vey. J A double Y, thumbs up, thank you. Good to see you in the comments. There is Adam Cyanide, I like the name. There is Loco5, thumbs up, thank you very, very much. My interest in spiders is interesting because while I've thought they've been beautiful and wonderful my whole life, I've always also been deeply arachnophobic until about four years ago. I am not arachnophobic anymore. I don't know what happened. I don't mind, but it's weird. There is Insignificant Nick, thumbs up, thank you very much for appreciating my moderately dry sense of humor. We have James Parker, thumbs up and thank you. There is Adrian. I, there are, if you have a good enough sight, you can, a oh, vision, you can see that there are insect cryptids, plant cryptids, animal cryptids, all sorts of cryptids. Because, yeah, I'm quite sure that there would be a giant, intelligent, tarantula-like cryptid. They're everywhere and everything. There are the, well, there is the horror files. Thumbs up and thank you. Good to see you in the comments. Ben B, greatly appreciated. And Hokey Smokes, moving is so much fun, isn't it? And then we have, uh, there is 
nobody. 11 people <laughs> who left me comments in the past 24 hours. Thumbs up. Thank you. You get me out of my head, into the world, and dealing with real people, if only for a short time, and if only in text. It is appreciated. Thumbs up. And again, do what you can that will you... <laughs> I have forgotten how to speak English. Do what you can for the things that you would like to do. If you have to go into survival mode, go into survival mode. If you can do the things that you want to do, do them. But if you can't, don't beat yourself up. It doesn't help anything. It just hurts you. So thumbs up and here's hoping. And of course, with the Cathefe bug raging and people dying every day from it, Please take the appropriate precautions, be smart about it. You don't need to get sick. You don't need to suffer the long-term effects. You don't need to risk death. And you don't need to send anybody else to the end of life corpse pile before they need to go. So be smart, take appropriate precautions. Thumbs up. And until we meet again, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, and that is a very good thing.